The world has responded to threats of nuclear war from Vladimir Putin. Russia's president addressed his nation on television for the first time since the invasion of Ukraine, where he escalated war efforts. Can I be my brother's keeper if I can't trust him? If he doesn't want to be there? Nope. If you're not willing to fight, then I can guarantee you're going to be ready to run, to lay down, to accept defeat. If we get people with reduced capability, reduced standards, reduced lethality, reduced dependability, can I trust him behind me? And that's what happens when you lower standards. That's what happens when you take in the reluctant. You can't trust them at your back. It's the partner you don't want to have, so they shouldn't be there. And if you force them to be there, don't expect a good result. Hey, team, how are we going? It is, Kaz, and I'm here in a solemn moment as I think and feel for the long-haired Russians that are about to get their hair zipped, cut off, given two weeks training and sent to a battle front where they're already losing. Abroad, despite the fact they're reservists, their leadership can't be trusted. The mission doesn't make sense. I think it's true that we need to take the statements of the dictator of Russia because he is opposed to mobilization or opposed to the presentation of the case of the Russian Federation. In Ukraine, nothing has changed. The rules of engagement are non-existent. You don't even know if you'll get Kazovac if you're wounded. And if you say no, you're going to go to jail. Or even worse. So what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in comments. We can't bury our head in the sand from geopolitical situations forever without thinking it's not going to come back and bite us on the ass as well. It's happening right now across our markets as truth has been diluted by our leaders. Guys and gals, we're living in a world of instability where things are occurring we thought were times of the past. The conflicts of old, the mobilisation of forces against their will. One step shy of conscription. There's no question that the Russians are struggling. You have to keep in mind that the Russian military is not very large. The total military is about 900,000. The army may be 280,000. This is not the Soviet army of three and a half million. It's much smaller, in fact, than uh, the U.S. armed forces. And then they've taken a lot of casualties, maybe 80,000 casualties. So they've been struggling to fill their ranks and even trying to expand. They've offered a lot of incentives for people to come into the service. They've uh, offered incentives uh, for people to uh, go to Ukraine, uh, but they just haven't been able to fill their ranks. The quality has been declining. Uh, so they've taken this next step of calling up a lot of reservists to fill, fill their ranks and uh, enable them to stay in the war. 300,000 men is not a figure to take for granted. It is a substantial amount of individuals. For the Ukraine, who are currently in the second half of the match, about to go into a dark, cold winter, that are about to face a reluctant, chaotic military force that is massive. Not all combatants, a lot of them will be supply and logistics as well, but all the same, they'll be carrying weapons. They're scared, and a lot of them will be there against their will. I don't know what thoughts to have on this. I would not want to have people that do not want to be behind me, behind me. Sailors, beware. I would like to know that the mission that I'm on is one that I agree with. Worth dying for. Worth giving up all of my tomorrows. I would like to know that if I'm injured, I'm going to have the cutting edge Kazovac available for me for dust off, or at least be able to bring my body home. None of these things are assured. Some of the things that are is there's massive amounts of money being made by the military complexes throughout the world that are using this as a game of chess, where they're not the losers. I don't believe we're getting told both sides of the story, but I'm not on necessarily any one side. I'm on both because the real victims here are gonna be the cream of the crop of Russia, the cream of the crop of Ukraine. Men coming home wounded, physically, mentally. 
everything that happens in a war is an atrocity. And when those with pens keep telling those with swords who wears the uniform and for how long, while their kids sit at home or in the best universities with a pen, we should all be disgusted. Why? Because we might be next. You don't think so? Do you trust the leadership of the world at the moment? I don't. Danica, we know there's a lot of restrictions on reporting in Russia, but social media does undercut a lot of that, and there is vision coming out of these protests across the country. There's been calls for people to take to the streets over this announcement from Vladimir Putin that he's enacting what's called a partial mobilisation of troops. Now, what that means is it's not yet conscription, but it comes very close. Up to 300,000 people who have any kind of military training or affiliation can be asked now to participate in the conflict in Ukraine. That's quite a widespread concept in Russia where they do have military service. It's pretty easy to then be in the category of someone who's considered able to serve in this situation. Also, anyone who's trained in something like engineering, which would be useful in a war effort, can automatically have a reservist accreditation put onto them and so that they're in that category. So it comes very close to what we would consider conscription. This is and it's not personal. To those 300,000 men that they are attempting to put into uniform right now, you're probably also not going to be the last. And my question in comments is, out of those 300,000, how many are going to make it home? I wonder. What does this mean for the Ukrainians that have been fighting so hard to maintain their land? Are they going to go home to a house that is gone? A family that is not coming back, that has found a better life in Poland or somewhere else? Who knows, as the cream of the crop of the Ukrainian people, are left to wonder, will there be anything left worth fighting for? All the money and aid that goes to the Ukraine is not attached to a receipt. So we know that it's not going to go to where it's supposed to go, is it? From a soldier that has been on a mission, I believe to have been unsuccessful in many ways, my heart goes out to those that are about to do the bleeding, the crying, the dying. And this was my way of just saying, let's have it, at least in the back of our mind, and understand this is one of many places in the world that is seeing strife today, yesterday, and it could be our country tomorrow, and we want people to care about us tomorrow, we want to fight for us tomorrow, as we've been fighting for them in the last hundred years. What do you think is the answer for this conflict? Is it for Ukraine to give up the Bondus regions? Is it for Putin to say enough is enough and back off? Is it NATO's job to say we're going to stop putting pressure on the borders and the sovereign soils okay, of Russia? I don't have the answers. Do you? Let us know in comments. I'm not an expert on this one at all, but I do feel for all. So yeah, except for those with the pens.